Hi, in this video, let's take a look at a failed thermostat. I live in southern New England, and a lot of the houses in this area are equipped with oil tanks or propane tanks for winter heating. And many houses built in the 80s, like mine, are using electric heat if they have not converted already. Now, this thermostat is actually from my living room. So, a few days ago, all of a sudden, we smelled something burning with a distinct electrical burning smell. And I quickly traced it to this thermostat located in my living room. Of course, it had failed spectacularly. And as you can see, uh, it was with burned wires and uh, some uh, damages uh, pretty obvious, as you can see here. Luckily, it did not start an electrical fire. Now, this kind of thermostat is actually very simple. In fact, it does not contain any electronics. It is really just a simple uh, piece of bimetallic strip, which bends when the surrounding temperature changes. It is uh, calibrated to the temperatures printed on the case here. But of course, because of the crude nature, these kind of thermostats are not particularly accurate, but uh, they should be quite reliable as it is no more than a power switch. I still have the original thermostat in an adjacent room, and that one had been operating flawlessly for more than 30 years. And uh, this specific model was made by Honeywell. If you look at uh, the specifications, I happen to still have the case for the new one that I bought to replace this. And if you look at the uh, specifications here, this one is rated at, uh, uh, at, with a maximum load of uh, 22 amps at uh, 240 volts, with a maximum dissipation power of uh, roughly 5300 uh, watts. So the baseboard heaters in the living room upstairs is only about 3000 watts at 240 volts. So it is well within spec. So what might have caused this thermostat to fail? Well, I, I think we can get some clue by examining the carnage here. So let me zoom in a little so you can see it better here. And uh, if you look at the back here, you will see that uh, the live side is totally charred and the wire insulation on this side is uh, pretty much gone due to the excessive heat. So at uh, first glance, it looks like it may have been overloaded beyond its maximum rating. But this is not possible. As I mentioned earlier, the load is well under 5000 watts. To further prove this, you can see that uh, the neutral side uh, of the wiring, they are totally intact. And the neutral side is also switched on and off, as I'm going to demonstrate here. So let me zoom back out, and I'll take my multimeter here. Uh, I'm going to put it on continuity mode. So right now, if you look at this neutral side, it's actually not connected. And uh, if I turn the dial, so let me uh, put both uh, hands on here. And uh, if I turn the dial, and you can see, uh, depends on the temperature setting, it is actually switched on and off. So that tells you that this side is also controlled in addition to the live side. Now, the same amount of current flows through both sides. Thus, it could have not been overheated as otherwise we would see similar damage on the neutral side as well. So have you guessed what it might have been the cause? Well, I think what might have happened uh, to cause this failure is the quality of the thermostat itself. And if you look carefully here, you will see that uh, the failure appeared to have started at the welds where the live wires are connected to the switch body. And the switch body on the live side is totally charged. So I think what was happening was due to some bad welding. And over time, the contact became uh, oxidized. So that contact resistance increased dramatically here. 
And at 15 amps, even a 0.1 ohm contact resistance would have dissipated more than 20 watts of heat. And given the small area, this heat is enough to cause the damage we see here. And, uh, and also you can see that uh, the wires here, uh, the closer to the contact point, the hotter it became as on this side, the wire itself is the insulation part is totally boiled off. On the other side, the insulation is heavily charred towards here, but uh, the outside is remains fine. So clearly that uh, uh, we can see the damage was uh, started from these contact points. Now let me uh, pry this uh, open and see if I can see anything inside a little bit more clearly. And I now I got it uh, totally disassembled and uh, of course had to destroy some of the switch itself. But as you can see here, that's the uh, bimetallic uh, strip here. So this is uh, the heart of this thermostat and uh, it bends, depends on the temperature that uh, its surrounding has. Um, and here's the switch body. And uh, as you can see, here is where the uh, live wire connections are. And uh, I, zo I can zoom in a little bit more. Actually, you can probably see here. So this is where I was mentioning earlier that uh, the contact uh, had failed. So this really should be very snug, but uh, as you can see, we can wiggle around. And that's why the contact resistance is very important in this kind of a high current applications. But the metal themselves, uh, given how thick they are, in fact, you can see on the uh, neutral side how thick these metal uh, plates are. And they definitely can handle the 20 plus amps current that is rated for this thermostat. So anyway, uh, that's pretty much what I want to cover for this video. And uh, I don't know how many of these uh, Honeywell thermostats are out there and uh, how, what, what is the failure rate uh, of this thermostat. Nevertheless, uh, it's certainly something that uh, we need to uh, be concerned about as uh, this kind of failure can easily lead to an electrical fire, which we don't, uh, and nobody wants. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up. Remember to share, subscribe, and I will catch up with you next time.